it's Daniela, and it's be the day 12. It was kind of raining when I got home from school today, so I didn't really get to go outside and do a video where the lighting was nice and pretty, so we're going to settle for the crappy lighting in my room. That's all right. Um, I was trying to think about what to do a video on today, and I was checking my email, and I got a little reminder from Duolingo, because I had been doing um, Duolingo a little while ago, and then I stopped for a little while, that's kind of how it seems to go, and it was one of those, we miss you, are you coming back, and I had a little picture of a sad little owl, and I just felt kind of guilty, so I decided to go do it again for a little bit, um, you know, as a language teacher, I'm kind of a big nerd about languages, um, but I'm really only fluent in English and Spanish, and it'd be cool to learn another language, but um, of the languages that had been available in Duolingo, there weren't, wasn't really any that really stuck out to me that I thought was really interesting to me and also would be one that I could pick up kind of easily. Um, I had been doing French originally uh, because in elementary school I actually took a little bit of French in fifth grade, but the main difference, you know, about French versus Spanish is Spanish actually is a phonetic language and as someone who's fluent in it, it's pretty easy for me to pick up new words and that sort of thing. In French, there are a lot of similarities and doing it in Duolingo it was pretty cool to see some of the similarities and be able to pick up certain words. But French is definitely not phonetic. And so it was kind of tricky when doing some of the activities like listening to a phrase and having to type it out. Um, there are certain words that sound pretty much the same, like the plural version of a word versus the singular, like um, the word for woman in French is la uh, femme. F-E-M-M-E, -E, I believe. And the word for women, plural, is la femme. My pronunciation is very off. But basically, they sounded the same because the S was not really pronounced in the plural version, and that was challenging. But recently, and by recently I mean back in November, they added a beta version of Duolingo in Catalan for Spanish speakers. Um, and Catalan, for those of you who don't know, is another language spoken in Spain. So in Spain, they actually have uh, four official languages. They have Spanish, which is the official language, obviously, in the whole country. And then they have three regional languages that are the official languages in the regions that they're in. So there's um, Galician, which is spoken in the northeast of Spain, um, north of where Portugal is. And the language itself kind of sounds, has similarities with Spanish and Portuguese, which makes sense because of where it is. Then the Basque language, which is spoken in kind of the north of Spain. And it's this area in Spanish is called País Vasco, and Spanish is spelled B-A-S-C-O. And that language actually isn't related to any other language families in the area, so nobody really knows where it comes from. And, but you know, some of you might, some names in that Basque language kind of have similarities to names in the Spanish language or Romance languages. And then there's Catalan, which is spoken primarily in the region of Catalonia, which is where Barcelona is. Oh, my cat just opened my door. That's okay. And um, in around the Valencia region, it's referred to as Valenciano. And I first learned about this language in 10th grade in Spanish 3 or Spanish 4. We had a little one day in Spanish class, my, we learned a little bit about the different languages, and my teacher had some articles and some different things that we could look at, and it was really cool to me, and uh, one thing that has always fascinated me about Romance languages is how similar they are to each other, uh, so even though I don't speak Portuguese or French or whatever, if I see it written down, I can more or less figure out what something is saying, and Catalan just kind of interested me more than, you know, than some of the other languages. Uh, so I've been doing it on Duolingo a little bit, and it's actually, you know, pretty easy for me to pick up. Um, it's definitely more phonetic than French. I don't think it's pronounced exactly like Spanish, but that's just kind of how it sounds to me, and I don't think I would ever be able to pronounce it quite like a native Catalan speaker, but that's okay. Um, do the best. And I like how Duolingo kind of is set up, where there's a mix of, um, you know, listening. You try and listen and type out what you're hearing. You might see a sentence written and spelled, and you might go from one language to the other. 
um, but because this is in beta, it's actually just for people who already speak Spanish who want to learn Catalan. Um, so that's pretty cool. But I did take a break from it for a while, so maybe I'll pick that up again. But uh, one of the things about learning another language, even if it is, you know, me just learning bits and pieces here on Duolingo, um, as somebody who learned Spanish when I was very little, like I never had to learn a second language as a student in high school. Um, so it does kind of help me understand, I guess even though I've always kind of understood, but it makes it easier to understand people who are learning another language um, and, and the difficulties that come with that. Um, so that's pretty neat. Uh, so if anybody ever, you know, has thought, man, I kind of want to learn another language. It's not always easy to find a class or go to another country, but Duolingo is definitely an awesome website or an app to check out, um, even if it is a little more basic, even if, you know, definitely would need to supplement it with other things to actually continue learning and becoming more fluent. But it's definitely a good place to start. I can put a link down in the description. And yeah, that's my Veda video for today. Uh, happy day 12, and I'll see you later.